I'm Len Schlesinger, and I'm absolutely delighted to be here today. Many of you might be wondering what a college president would be doing at a panel like this, given that it is actually focused on things that are practical and useful. Um, <laughs> so let me at least try to take some time to explain. Um, Babson College uh, is generally known in the broader academic community as the number one school in the world uh, for training the next generation of entrepreneurs. We've been doing this now uh, for the better part of a half century um, and, uh, and have from our perch uh, in Wellesley, Massachusetts, 13 miles uh, west of Boston, uh, begun um, a massive outreach initiative uh, that goes back about three or four years to begin to become uh, active educators and active interveners uh, to advance the cause of entrepreneurship uh, in the world, uh, recognizing full well that there is the marvelous opportunity that comes from the explicit recognition of the fact that it is empirically uh, defined as entrepreneurship is clearly the most powerful force for economic and social value creation that exists on the face of the earth. And when you're the number one school in that space, uh, you have not only an opportunity, but quite honestly, a moral responsibility to play. Uh, now, to that end, as part of the agenda, what you heard in the first two presentations uh, was, in the first presentation, uh, explicit recognition of the fundamental differences that exist in the construction of SMEs in an environment like Saudi Arabia uh, and what we romanticize in the United States. Uh, and in the second presentation, you got a great uh, understanding of the underlying dimensions of the entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, in a well-developed system like the United States. Now let me explain to you a little bit about what we're trying to do uh, and how I will use the data from the first two presentations and my own uh, to take a little bit different spin. We have a project at Babson right now uh, called the Babson Entrepreneurial Ecosystem Project. And it is a big project with a big mission. Uh, we are committed to demonstrating that we can impact societies and regions to foster high growth entrepreneurial ventures on a self-sustaining basis using a codifiable and rec replicable methodology. To demonstrate that we can impact societies and regions everywhere to foster high growth entrepreneurial ventures on a self-sustaining basis using a codifiable and replicable methodology. We are now doing on-the-ground work in every continent of the world, in varieties of environments where we are working with uh, governments, business leaders, community organizations, philanthropists, and foundations to attempt to build on-the-ground entrepreneurial ecosystems that really do make a difference, not only in advancing the cause of SMEs, but in advancing the cause of entrepreneurship broadly. What we can tell you now, four years into this project, with absolute clarity, is what doesn't work. So we can tell you today what doesn't work. And by the way, my assumption is our, clar our position on what doesn't work will be the source of some controversy among other people who might disagree. Then, when we get away from what doesn't work, I'll attempt in a few minutes to give you some sense of the hypotheses we have at this point about what is required to advance the cause of SMEs in Saudi Arabia in particular and in the world generally. So first, what doesn't work? One, what doesn't work is the fundamental place that most organizations start, which is to take a trip to Silicon Valley and attempt to emulate it. Uh, whether it's Russia's Skolkovo or Singapore's Biopolis, um, these are uh, adventures that show little or no appreciation for how Silicon Valley developed in the first place. I think in Silicon Valley today, they couldn't reproduce Silicon Valley. Uh, and the notion of emulating someone else's environment in a dramatically different context that grew, was not designed, okay, um, is a serious, serious, serious mistake. And we have yet to see a single example that we can point to of a country or an environment that has attempted to copy a region like Silicon Valley and has much to report. Number two, every environment we go to starts with a very simple and simplistic silver bullet <laughs> set of piecemeal policies and programs uh, to generate the solutions. They believe it will be incubators or angel networks 
uh, or venture capital or education or microfinance or tax credits or tech transfer from universities. And on a piecemeal basis, by and large, they don't adequately address the fundamental systemic issues that need to be dealt with to build entrepreneurial ecosystems. <laughs> Top-down winner selection, whether it's sectors or clusters or co companies, sector-based cluster strategies and direct investment strategies that are generally driven by governmental organizations heretofore have been one of the greatest disappointments uh, in global economic development from our perspective. Um, and, uh, and again, um, sitting next to uh, uh, governmental authorities makes me a little apprehensive, uh, but to systematically Don't say that <laughs> government is terrible at picking winners and losers. They're better at picking losers, but, the, uh, uh, but, but terrible at picking winners. <laughs> Finally, broad national policies, adopting the, the issues of ecosystems on a national level and believing that the regional differences can be homogenized with a set of, uh, of global policies at the national level is a dramatic oversimplification. So assuming that one competitiveness strategy, one national innovation system is adequate to the task seriously understates the complexity of what we're dealing with. And then finally, government giveaways everywhere in the world. The notion that somehow we will spur the development of SMEs by giving money away. Sometimes it's just easier to give money away and expect nothing in return and thereby not be disappointed. <laughs> so as I suggested, we discover great successes at the individual level but far more problems with angel networks, government supported venture capital, incubators and innovation centers, uh, cluster strategies, as we said, all of these things. And what we're talking about the need for, particularly to advance SMEs, particularly in an environment like Saudi Arabia, is a systematic entrepreneurship ecosystem that recognizes all the elements of the environment that Suresh began to identify in the United States that needs to be intentionally designed on a regional basis within the kingdom. And that's the issues of policy, finance, the culture, the environment for entrepreneurship, the support networks that exist, the human capital issues in terms of the skill development and educational system, and obviously the issues of the structure of the markets. And, uh, and all of the variables and all of the details that surround this diagram give you some sense of the complexity that needs to be addressed if you're going to come to a holistic solution. Now, given that, I can advance a series of hypotheses that we believe at this point seems to lead to substantially more positive outcomes. It is one thing to target the evolution of SMEs. It is another thing to target the evolution of high potential SMEs. Job creation, particularly when you were talking about job creation in the order of three million jobs, will not come from two million SMEs employing one and a half people each. The reality is what we have learned in developed economies around job growth is the vast majority of the job growth comes from a small portfolio of high impact growth enterprises that emerge out of the SME population and are nurtured by the ecosystem. I am not suggesting that SMEs aren't important. They are critical and they are critical sources of necessity based employment in economies like Saudi Arabia, but they are not going to be the engine of large-scale job creation. You need to target very specific geographies. Even though you're not making industrial bets, you should be making geographic bets, and you should be understanding the different needs that exist in particular regions of the country. Um, we advance at this point, having gone through this for several years, the need to actually create an independent temporary organization <laughs> whose existence uh, revolves around the structure and the knitting together of a local ecosystem uh, that is designed to get it started and to bring it to the resolution of very specific objectives. And that is, in terms of specific objectives, we are talking about the number of SMEs and the number of high impact <laughs> enterprises that are developed in a region per unit of population. So we are very rigorous about measuring 
the nature of innovation, the nature of entrepreneurship, the number of enterprises created, and the number of high impact enterprises that are nurtured per unit of population, recognizing that if we have a commitment to local economic development and job creation, we should be dealing with that on an a priori basis and we should be creating organizations tasked to do that. When you reach that, this organization should stop. I know it is very hard to think about starting things that don't die and don't end, but what we hope to be able to do is over several years get these ventures going and then get out of the business of knitting these things together and let them become self-sustaining. We want to understand that the government must play a critical role, but that's a nurturing role, not an industry selection role. And then we also need to understand what drives the hypothesis that I'm talking about here. This is about experimenting, learning, and trying again. The point one takes away from the first two presentations are the differences that exist in the Saudi economic system from the US economic system legitimate experimentation, legitimate not coming to the environment, suggesting that we know exactly what we need to do to spur SME development and economic development. Finally, we have the policy paradox that I'll end with here today. Uh, we're talking about SMEs that are low and high quality ventures, and we're talking about whether or not those ventures ought to get money. Uh, and in the high quality venture, we often find society saying the capable can manage for themselves and should be able to get their own money. And we throw money at the disadvantage saying we can't let the disadvantage fail, recognizing quite honestly the likelihood is they will. For the high ventures that get resources, we're saying we cannot create wealthy elites or help the rich get richer, but at the same time, we need to create enterprises that create jobs and there's a tension inside governmental entities to spread resources like butter or margarine on bread to distribute resources equally that we need to avoid. So what do we need to understand? We need to understand that we need to be as focused on letting bad ventures die as we need to be on supporting good ones. A portfolio of bad ventures is not the engine of economic development. And it is not anything to be celebrated. In fact, what it ends up with is a system that gets it all backwards, where we end up having bad outcomes of lost opportunity, no growth, and entrepreneurship that's discouraged among the high growth ventures that need support, and we end up with wasted resources on the low lifestyle SMEs and the micro ventures that aren't going to spear economic development. So in short, there is no force as powerful as an idea whose time has come. Victor Hugo said that, and, uh, and there is no time better than today uh, to recognize that entrepreneurship and the evolution of SMEs is just such an idea. It is a very complex issue that requires a multi-part answer organized on a regional basis across a portfolio of variables that need to get integrated to make it happen. It must be rigorously measured and rigorously managed, and it must be done in a mode that recognizes the importance of experimentation, given the huge differences between the Saudi environment and the US environment that we've capitalized on in the first two presentations. Thanks so much for at least giving you the opportunity to hear a contrary point of view on some of these issues.